What you need to know about robot-assisted radical prostatectomy as a treatment for prostate cancer. If you are watching this video, either you or a loved one has prostate cancer and is considering surgery as an option. This video is to help you understand the procedure and to describe the hospital and post-operative course to help prepare you for surgery. Let's talk a little bit about anatomy. The prostate is a part of the male reproductive system, which includes the penis, the prostate, and the testicles. The prostate is located just below the bladder and in front of the rectum. It's usually about the size of a walnut and includes the first part of the urethra, which is the tube that empties urine from the bladder. The prostate produces a fluid made up of a part of semen, and it is where the three components of semen, prostate fluid, seminal vesicle fluid, and sperm from the testicles mix. As a man ages, the prostate tends to increase in size. This can cause the urethra to narrow and decrease urine flow. This is called benign prostatic hyperplasia and is not the same as prostate cancer. Men may also experience other prostate changes that are not cancer related. Let's review the male anatomy. The bladder sits above the prostate. The seminal vesicles sit behind the prostate. The urethra runs through the prostate and then the rectum and anus are directly behind the bladder and the prostate. It's important to know that prostate cancer is very common. About one man in six will be diagnosed with prostate cancer during his lifetime. Prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in American men, behind only lung cancer. However, seven out of eight men diagnosed with prostate cancer do not die because of it. This is because prostate cancer is generally slow growing. Let's review some treatment options for localized prostate cancer. These are alternative therapies to surgery and include active surveillance where patients are monitored closely to make sure that the disease does not progress and that the disease is not worse than initially thought. Another option is external beam radiation, IGRT, IMRT. The prostate is treated with a carefully targeted beam of radiation. Another alternative is interstitial prostate brachytherapy, where small radioactive seeds are planted in the prostate. Cryosurgery is the freezing of the prostate. But with the radical prostatectomy procedure, the entire prostate and seminal vesicles are surgically removed. The surgery requires an anesthetic, and the patient will usually be in the hospital for one to three days following surgery, and then be sent home with a urinary catheter and his bladder to drain his urine. This tube will be removed after one to two weeks. The advantages of radical prostatectomy is that it may remove all of the cancer. Because the prostate is removed, it can be analyzed by pathologists to determine the true stage and grade of the disease. Lymph nodes may also be removed at the time of surgery, which gives further staging information. The disadvantages of radical prostatectomy is that it requires anesthesia and a hospital stay. Patients can experience acute complications following surgery, such as infection, bleeding, or injury to surrounding organs. Long-term complications might include urinary incontinence and erectile dysfunction. There are many potential benefits of robotic prostatectomy. A more precise removal of the cancerous tissues, the ability of the surgeon to perform nerve-sparing surgery to enable a faster return of erectile function and a better chance of return of urinary continence less blood loss, less need for a blood transfusion, less pain, and a lower risk of complications. With robotic prostatectomy, you also see a lower risk of wound infection, a shorter hospital stay, less chance of readmission to the hospital, a less chance of needing follow-up surgery, fewer number of days with the catheter, a decreased risk of deep vein thrombosis, and overall a faster recovery and return to normal activities. What are the risks with the surgery? Bleeding, which may require transfusion in approximately 50% of open cases and 3 to 5% of robotic cases. Injury to the rectum in about 1% of cases. Infection, nerve injury, worsening kidney function, blood clots, heart attack, stroke, pneumonia, or death. Later or chronic side effects of surgery the biggest one is erectile dysfunction, and this is greater than 50% of men that have had surgery. 
The nerves that signal for an erection run adjacent to the back of the prostate on either side. Usually these nerves can be spared, but even during nerve sparing, there is some damage that is done. Recovery often takes three to six months and sometimes up to two to three years. But about 60% of men with good function prior to surgery do recover in time. During this recovery, there are many things that can be used to help with recovery and allow for improved sexual function, such as pills, devices, injections, and in some situations, a secondary surgery can be performed to place a penile prosthesis. Patients may note a loss of penile length or curvature as well following prostate surgery. Urinary incontinence can also occur. This involves leakage of urine with coughing or sneezing or straining, which will usually improve over time. 90 to 95% of men recover their control of urine in time, anywhere from a few weeks to 18 months. But sometimes leakage is persistent and another intervention will be required. Kegel exercises done prior to and after surgery may help with recovery. There is also the risk of recurrence of cancer requiring additional medical or radiation treatment. The surgery takes approximately three hours to perform. Additional time includes anesthesia as well as patient positioning. More time may be needed for more complicated cases. During the hospital recovery, you will expect to see five to six small abdominal incisions. Usually the diet is advanced to regular by the day after surgery. To help prevent the formation of blood clots, external leg pumps that squeeze the calf muscles as well as the use of injection of blood thinners are used. To help pneumonia, it's very important to use the incentive spirometer to help you take deep breaths. You will have pain control with pills as well as injection medication. There will be a catheter draining the urine from the bladder. You should expect some bloating and possibly abdominal distension, but walking is the fastest route to recovery. Most patients are hospitalized for only one to two nights. You will have a drain placed at the time of surgery. For most patients, the drain will be removed prior to discharge. Some patients will go home with it and will be taught how to empty it and measure it. All patients who have a prostatectomy have a catheter in place because the bladder neck is sutured directly back to the urethra when the prostate is removed. Catheters are not comfortable. You can expect to feel like you have to urinate all the time. Forcing fluids helps to keep the catheter draining. Nobody likes it. There are attachments to wear under your clothes called the leg bag, which will make it easier for you to move around with it. The larger night bag will hold more urine and be usually used overnight so that it won't fill when you're asleep. As long as you have a catheter in, you can expect some blood in the urine, and you may have urges to urinate with even the leakage of urine from around the catheter. These are called bladder spasms. Both of these things are completely normal so long as the catheter continues to drain. Full recovery following prostatectomy is about three to four weeks on average. You should be able to go up and down stairs and walk around easily. You can shower when you get home, but no tub baths. You will go home on pain medication and stool softeners. Sometimes you might need a special x-ray called a cystogram before the catheter can be removed. The catheter typically stays in for 7 to 14 days depending upon your physician's instructions. You may see discharged around the catheter that may be clear to yellow and this is not uncommon and not abnormal. Do not lift anything heavier than 15 to 20 pounds for the first couple of weeks following surgery. This can increase by 5 pounds per week. No tub baths for at least 2 weeks. Expect not to be driving until you're completely off pain medication, anywhere from five days to a couple of weeks. You should expect to be off work for three to six weeks, and we will help fill out any paperwork for FMLA that's needed. Please call your doctor if you experience a fever greater than 101.5, chills, redness or drainage from the wound, or the catheter not draining correctly, if you experience severe pain not controlled by pain medication. Call with any nausea or vomiting, constipation unresponsive to laxatives or severe diarrhea, or shortness of breath. Your chance of cure will depend on the final pathology from the prostate in the lymph nodes. The report will commonly take about 7 to 10 working days to get the results. Most time, this is reviewed at the visit where the catheter is removed. 
Your surgeon will have their scheduler contact you. You may need medical clearance with your primary care physician or internist to include a history and physical exam, blood work, an EKG, and a chest x-ray. You'll be contacted with a surgical date and instructions of where and when to report. The pre-authorization process is essential. We will communicate with your insurance company to determine your coverage and any co-payments or deductibles that you might owe. We'll provide you with an estimate of any charges that you may incur. All charges are due prior to the procedure, and payment plans can be arranged if needed. Preparing for surgery, some doctors prefer a bowel prep. If this is recommended by your doctor, we will give you a bowel prep starting the day prior to surgery to clean out the bowel, similar to what you would have with a colonoscopy. You can have clear liquids the evening before surgery, but nothing to eat or drink after midnight. A chlorhexidine shower is recommended the day prior or morning of surgery. This may be given to you or purchased at a local pharmacy. The hospital will call you and discuss medications to take the morning prior to surgery. If you are taking a blood thinner like aspirin, Plavix, Coumadin, Xarelto, or Eliquis, please let your surgeon know as they will likely need to take special precautions. Most of the time, we will need to stop these medications. You should, however, never stop these medicines without first discussing that with your primary care provider, cardiologist, or vascular surgeon. If you have any questions, please contact your surgeon scheduler to clarify any instructions. Please arrive early, at least one to two hours before your scheduled surgery time. We hope that your procedure goes as well as possible and that you have a speedy recovery. We appreciate your feedback regarding your procedure as we are always trying to improve the care that we provide our patients. Should you have any questions regarding your procedure or recovery, please contact your doctor. Thank you.